morning and welcome to Wholesome Roots. Today, I'm gonna tell you how we raise our mealyworms. Mealyworms are a very simple, easy way to grow food that's high in protein and a nice treat for your chickens or even if you have pet lizards and other things that eat mealyworms, they're great treats and they're very easy to grow. I'm gonna show you how in five simple steps. So mealworms are actually not worms at all. They are one of the life stages of a beetle. They are just a tiny, small, blackish brown beetle. These beetles feed on grains, mostly. Um, they can be found in your oatmeal even. If you've left it out in the open, they can take over your oatmeal. They lay eggs in the food source and from the egg emerges the larva stage. The larva stage is what we call worms in most circles. The larva stage is what most people call mealworms. So this little guy right here, he doesn't bite or anything and he's the food source for the chickens. Right now we are at a very young stage in our larva so they are all tiny tiny and they are getting bigger and bigger and when they get to a bigger size we will feed them to the chickens. After they go through the larva stage some of them will begin to pupate into a pupa. At this stage they stay into that pretty much it's almost like an asleep stage. They are just in a pupa they're not eating they're not moving occasionally you'll see the pupas twitch um, if they're startled by something but they're mainly just gonna just stay in there and pupate out as a beetle when the life cycle becomes complete. So that's the complete life cycle. Beetle egg larva pupa. That is the complete life cycle for the mealworm. The one that we are most concerned about is the larva stage where they are that worm-like structure that the chickens love to eat. So we let them just do their whole cycle in the same container. Some people separate them out, we don't. We try to keep things as simple as possible on our homestead. So keeping this simple is what makes it easy and makes it so that we continue to do it. If it was hard, we would have already given up. So the only food that they have in here is oatmeal. You can use bran or cereal or anything. Um, we have a layer of bran cereal and a layer of oatmeal. We also give them slices of apples or slices of potatoes and occasionally some banana peels. Five simple steps. Step one, acquire a container. I like using the fish tank. I've got a lid to put on the fish tank that will keep out any varmints that might be interested in eating the oats or the larvae themselves. I clean and sterilize it before I put my colony in here. So I use vinegar as my sterilizer to keep it safe and non-toxic for the creatures that I'm about to put in. You don't have to use a fish tank. You actually can use just a Rubbermaid container with holes punched in the lid. But your holes have to be small enough that no critters can get in to your mealyworms and eat them. Once I have the container, then I need a food source. So step two is making sure you have an adequate food source for them. It's a good idea to put two to three inches of that oats. Um, this is a little low right now because we were just moving them down here recently and getting them started over again. And we have a box of oatmeal that we're gonna be adding to it today. I meant to bring it down with me, but it was left at the house. So I'll come back down later and I'll put another layer of oats right on top to keep their food layer nice and deep. That's their bedding. Their food is their bedding. Pretty simple, right? Step three is to make sure that you start out with a nice healthy colony of mealworms. Most of the places that sell mealworms online will provide some pupa stage, some adult stage, and some larva stage. That is a great way to get started and it will be much more easy for you to keep your colony going if you have all of the life stages. But every colony goes through cycles where there's less adults or more larvae or no pupa and so 
for us, we've been going at this for a while and we happen to be in the stage of larva. If we were to let them go into the pupa stage and hatch out into beetles, we would have a stage of beetles. We do allow some of the pupa to hatch out into beetles so that they can lay eggs for the next generation to keep the cycle going. You can also purchase just the larva by themselves and start your colony with those, but you have to remember that you can't feed them all to your chickens. You have to allow some of them to go through the pupa stage and become adults to lay the eggs for your next generation. Step four, keep an eye on them, keep them fed, make sure that they have a food source and remove any food that becomes moldy or inedible. One of the things in your colony management is to watch out for the pest. So the main pest that we watch out for is keeping a lid on it so that no critters try to get in there and eat the oats or the larvae. The second stage is to watch out for a, either a grain mite or a pantry moth outbreak. Those are two things that have no real danger to the colony. It will just infest and eat all the food. Um, and it kind of gets problematic if that happens. I have been through both. The thing is, is when you buy oats from the grocery store, they contain eggs. Yes, I know, that's disgusting. But they do contain eggs already. So if you don't put it in the freezer for at least 24 hours to kill any of the eggs, before adding them to your colony, you could introduce mites or pantry moth. I have dealt with both. In fact, last year, we had a mite infestation that was so severe and sudden that that is when we removed the colony from our home. We had it in the home, in our home and we were just watching them. The boys loved picking worms out and playing with the beetles. And when the mites started crawling up the side of the glass, it looked like, like a cloud of white. And I was like, what is that? Cause they were so tiny. I just couldn't tell. And, and I finally figured it out and I was like, oh my gosh, just put that outside. I'm done. I'm done. We put it outside on the porch and we forgot about it. Do you know, months later we went back and looked and they were still alive out there on their own with nobody doing anything to maintain them. And the mites were gone. The mites don't survive outside as well as the mealyworms do. So the mites ended up being no longer a problem. We refed them and started our colony back up again. Only to forget about them again when winter came. We forgot to bring them in and it got cold and I thought, oh my goodness, we are so horrible, we killed them. There was no activity in there. And so this sat out on the front porch all winter long. Come spring, when it started to warm up again, the boy said, Mommy, the beetles are moving. And I said, what? Sure enough, there were some that survived our cold winter and had regrown and began the colony all over again. So I'm convinced that from now on, in our mild Georgia climate, I can leave these outside in the barn and they will be safe. So the fun part is step five. Step five is when you get to harvest your worms. One of the best ways that I have found to harvest the worms is to deprive them of the treats. Take any apples, potatoes, banana peels, or carrot sticks out that I've been putting in there and leave it for a week or a couple of days with just the oats and then put an apple slice in there or a potato slice in there, a fresh one. And all you gotta do is pick it up and you're gonna find little worms crawling all over the bottom of it. They get so excited when their food is refreshed with something with moisture that they cling to it and they bite onto it. And so when you pick it up, they're gonna be hanging off the bottom and you can just shake them into your container, whether it's a bowl or a Tupperware container or whatever you're using, an old coffee can. 
and you just shake them off. You can also just sift through the litter and find the big ones and pull them out with your fingers if you're not squeamish. It is recommended that you wear gloves and a mask because some people are sensitive to the dust. The dust is actually their feces, it's their poop, and it can cause allergies in some people. So it is recommended that you wear a um, just a dust mask when you're moving the colony and you're cleaning out the cage and doing stuff with them. It is a good idea to wear a dust mask. Just yesterday when I was moving the colony over and getting all the old carcasses out and all the poop at the bottom, I started sneezing like crazy. So I, I, I realized I, I should have been wearing a mask. So you take those larvae out and you bring them out to your chickens and you watch your chickens be the happiest chickens on the planet. They love them. They are the most favorite treat out of everything we give them. We do soldier fly larvae too under our quail hutches just behind me. And they love those too. And they're very high in protein and good for them too. But these, I don't know what it is about them. They just love them. They sell them in the store as freeze dried mealworms and they're so expensive. Doing it this way, it's practically free. I mean, generally the oats will be like the bottom of my oats, you know, and I'm like, mm, I don't know, there might be some pantry moth in there. I'll give it to them. <laughs> or there'll be, um, the kids ate half of an apple and left half of an apple. Any of you moms out there know my plight. So I cut off the side that the kids bit and I give it to the worms and then I eat the rest of the apple. So it works out beautifully um, as a low cost, high protein, excellent, easy and simple way to feed our chickens extra protein all year long. I hope that this has helped you guys. I hope that you've learned something about mealworms that you didn't already know. And I hope that maybe you too are encouraged to try it out and to have a mealworm colony of your own. All right, so that's it. I got my lid back on and I'm gonna let these guys grow a good bit more before I start feeding them to my chickens. They're kind of small right now. So I'm gonna be giving extra feed, which is the treats. So thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, comment down below with any ideas, suggestions, or questions that you might have about mealworms. Thank you for watching Wholesome Roots.